All right, hello and welcome back. So what we are going to be doing this time around is we are going to be looking at partial, partial differential equations. And uh, so we will be speaking about PDs in the next um, 10 lectures or so in these next four weeks. Uh, a little, maybe a little more than that, but, but yeah. So uh, before we go on, so, uh, so let's just say partial differential equations. And um, yeah, let's draw a line here. So my references are um, the following. So let's uh, get down the references first. So, so let's say recommended reading. Um, so there is something called elements of PDEs. This is something this is by Ian Snedden. And uh, there will also be um, Dennery and Crazy Wiggy Mathematics. Physicists. So this is Dennery and Crazy Wiggy. K R Z Y W I C K I. So I'll keep it at these two for the moment, and then we shall move on. And if there is something else, then I can uh, say that to you later. All right, so let's start off with uh, why we are interested in why differential equations. Okay. So this is going to be, uh, you know, a recap of some things that we have, uh, you have seen in various lectures, various courses. But the idea is one of the main motivations, essentially, behind building, say, a physical uh, theory, is that you want to uh, predict the state of a physical system in future given its state at an instant. So naturally, what you want is, uh, you know, uh, time derivatives of physical uh, quantities to understand how physical quantities are going to change with time. Now, the, the reason why, uh, I mean, time, time derivatives of uh, physical, uh, physical quantities and not, for example, differences in values of a uh, physical uh, I mean, quantity at, uh, at finite time intervals are involved is related uh, mainly to the fact that we are, are, uh, we are geared to think about physical uh, quantities which uh, change in a manner that is, uh, I mean, uh, continuous in, in time. So we, are, we don't think of discrete jumps, we think of you know, things, uh, things evolving. So that's the reason, uh, so that's, that's why, for example, uh, you know, uh, things like, so remember that if you want Newton's equations, Newton's equation, So that's what, that's m d two x squared, sorry, d two x d tau d t squared is equal to a force which uh, depends on x of t, can depend on x dot of t, and can depend on t itself. So this is, for example, Newton's equation. Then remember you have Schrodinger's equation
So that is what that is I H cross del psi del T is equal to the Hamiltonian well, acting on psi. And also, for example, Maxwell's equations, not all of them, but at least some of them, which is del mu F mu mu. So if you are familiar with this way of trying to write it, we'll not be really using this, but you know, F mu nu, if you remember it's del mu so for example max some of maxwell's equations all of these involve time uh, time derivatives of uh, quantities that uh, are related to a uh, uh, physical system if you wish uh, fundamental theories in physics are relativistically uh, i mean covariant as, as you can see with Maxwell's equations out here. And hence, uh, you expect that there is going to be spatial, I mean, spatial derivatives along with time, time, time derivatives. Now, theories that are uh, derived from uh, fundamental uh, theories, for example, like Newton's equations that I've just shown you, or, uh, or, or the non relativistic Schrodinger equations. And some, uh, if you wish, not so fundamental uh, uh, theories that are based on them are bound to have this feature in built as well. So, so you know, there is going to be time, time derivatives, but there are also going to be spatial derivatives. And in this, in this is the reason, if you, uh, uh, so this is uh, the reason why formulation of physical uh, theories are very naturally uh, based on uh, I mean, differential equations and you know partial differential equations are, are the are uh, the most uh, general form so let me let me just write this uh, you know in very brief out here so uh, in physics uh, we are interested in uh, the change evolution of systems of quantities with time sorry um, okay. and uh, with, with with time and um, and hence time derivatives. And uh, you know, fundamental theories. Let's let's put this as point one, and as point two, we should write fundamental theories are relativistically invariant And we hence, hence we expect spatial derivatives in them and theories derived from them. Okay, so uh, that is uh, that is you know, one of the reasons. I mean, you know, in a sense, why uh, we are interested in 
uh, differential equations. So what is a partial, partial differential equation? Partial differential equation is something that has more than one independent, independent uh, variable and is an equation that involves partial, uh, yeah, partial derivatives of a uh, dependent uh, variable with uh, more than one independent, independent variable. So, uh, so PDEs, PDE is essentially more than one independent variable and is an equation involving partial derivatives of a dependent variable with more than one independent. Okay, so what are some uh, important equations? Uh, you know, Laplace equation. So this is like something like del squared psi equals zero. This is, for example, uh, important in electrostatics, Newtonian gravity hydrodynamics, then we have the modification to Poisson equation. So that's horrible looking del squared, but that's del squared psi equals to minus rho. So this again is important for electrostatics, Newtonian gravity. Then there is the Helmholtz equation. Helmholtz uh, wave equation, if you wish. This is box squared psi plus k squared psi zero. Uh, this is important for, uh, you know, Wave propagation and for time independent Schrodinger equation. Of course, the Schrodinger equation itself. That is a Hamiltonian, which we can write as h squared, h cross squared twice m, x squared. U far in the psi equals uh, my h goes to two psi. Uh, you have the time independent form of it, uh, which is given by the time independent. That is again. box squared plus B C psi is equal to zero. Then you have things called the diffusion equation. That is given by del del T of U minus k squared u equal to zero. Then you have uh, the Klein-Gordon equation. Uh, 
that is delta squared minus rho of c squared. And um, we will finally write down this with the Dirac equation. We'll see a lot of these uh, when, when we are doing this. Doing this part of the course. So you see that most, uh, I see all of them are uh, PDEs and most of them are second order. And uh, so we will try to, in this course, we should try to address them uh, one, one by one, okay? So that's the plan. All right, so first thing, what do we want to do? Uh, first thing, we, I want to remind you of something that you have seen earlier, of course. Uh, separation of variables. So, so that's uh, what we would want to do first up. So this is a method by which you are, this is what, uh, you know, method by which you can reduce a partial, partial differential equation into a set of ordinary uh, differential equations and device methods to solve. Um, so the set of uh, uh, solutions will be obtained in a separable form. And these will uh, suffice to expand any solution of the physical problem. And uh, hence, we will constitute a complete set of solutions of the equation. So, uh, in short, if you uh, so, in short, the general solution to the uh, you know respective PDs, uh, re representing all possible physical uh, situations, is available through this particular way of trying to solve. This. So, that's good. That's great. So, what do we need to? Uh, I mean, what 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 do we need to do more? For example, uh, so let's look at, uh, I mean, let's look at ODEs, okay? For example, you know, the thing that we have seen and love, um, uh, you know, Newton's laws is a set of I mean, ODEs. And this is uh, just, you know, F equal to MA at the end of the day. So that's, that's all. So that's just F equal to MA, or this is M D2 R D2. So integration of this gives us a general solution to this problem. So if you do this, so what, what, what do you do this integration of this? Uh, gives us a general solution. With six integration constants. Remember, we are in uh, three dimensions here and it's a second order equation. Now the specific trajectory of the particle is not known until and unless we give you appropriate boundary conditions, appropriate, I mean, appropriate, appropriate uh, I mean, conditions, which determine these six, uh, six numbers. Okay. Um, if you were to deal with a problem with just one, I mean, one, one, independent variable t, the answer is simple. One can, for example, just uh, give you the position or uh, uh, um, uh, velocity at an initial instance, and uh, and, and then it, it's, uh, the, the job is done. 
But if you have a smaller set of, I mean, initial, uh, yeah, yeah, initial uh, conditions which are specified, the trajectory is not unique. Now suppose if you have too much information, even that is an issue because uh, if you are given, for example, the initial and final uh, positions and what the initial um, velocity uh, is, then the set solution, uh, the system may not have a, a solution at all. So the subtlety is in the fact that, uh, so we need to specify, I mean, these sort of uh, boundary conditions, which are appropriate for each, each problem. So in the case of uh, PDEs as well, this is going to be uh, extremely important. So, so just as, as a comment here, let me just write that, uh, you know, just as in ODEs, in PDEs, it is very important to know a set of, of appropriate boundary condition for each problem. So let's let's try to actually see what can go wrong. Okay. So we will try to look at three ODs, that mean three PDs. So uh, three PDs. Let's call them A, del two del x squared plus del two del x squared acting on psi is equal to zero. B, del two del x squared minus del two del y squared non psi is equal to zero. And finally, del two del x squared minus del del y on psi minus b is equal to zero. Okay. Now what we were what we want to do is we are going to define this in on and within a square of side A with corners at zero, 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 A, A zero and A. Okay. And what we will assume is that the second, uh, so okay, boundary conditions, boundary conditions, that psi is equal to zero on the sides of the square. Okay. What we're gonna assume is that the second order uh, derivatives of psi exist and are continuous within the square. Okay. Now let's look at all of these, these three equations one by one. Let's look at the first one, okay? Now, what do you know? We know that Laplace's equation that does not admit any local maxima or minima. If uh, psi is equal to zero on the boundary, then psi has to be equal to zero on the interior as well, and the solution is unique, right? So this is very good. So the first one is out of our way. 
So this just essentially means size psi of x y is equal to zero. Now in uh, in B, uh, of course, psi equal to zero is a solution, but uh, in addition to that, one can also write down an infinite set where psi is actually given by a n sine of n by x over a sine of n by y over a for n equal to one, two, three, so on. So we have an infinite set, okay? Now, um, what is the last thing? So what we want to do is we want to evaluate uh, this del two, x squared minus del y on psi is equal to b. We want to evaluate this at zero zero. Okay. This requires that uh, you know. Let's let, let let me just write this down to make this a little clearer. So. This requires what? This requires us to write down the following. So del two del x squared minus del del y on psi equals to b. Uh, we want to uh, evaluate it at zero, zero. So this essentially entails that we, uh, we do this del two del x squared minus del del y that psi where x, y is equal to zero, zero. We want this to be equal to B and this is not equal to zero, right? Now, on the other hand, the specified boundary condition actually requires that, you know, if you are at zero, zero, then the del two del X, I mean, so this particular thing, this is actually del two del X squared psi X, Y, and X, Y equal to zero, zero is equal to zero and is also equal to, so this is by boundary conditions. This is clearly incompatible with the boundary conditions. So this is just, just by inspection. So this essentially means that what is gonna happen is that the boundary condition that we have specified for this does not yield that this, this guy does not have any solutions. There are no, no solutions to the problem with this, these boundary conditions. Okay. So this is the thing that I was trying to stress. What we are trying to stress is that it would it is important that we specify the boundary conditions properly. And if you do not do that, then 
it may be that some particular UPD is you would not be able to solve. Okay. All right. So next time around, what we are going to be doing is we are going to try. We'll try and figure out. Uh, you know what are uh, sorts of. We'll try and classify uh, PDs, and then we will try to give you an idea of what sort of boundary conditions there are um, before we move on to other stuff. All right. So that's it for the day, and uh, we shall move on to more things pretty soon. All right. Thank you.